Okay, so we're going to talk about simplifying and rationalizing square roots. So something to know is that this means the square root of 5. So does this symbol. They both mean the square root of 5. So square root of 5. Let me go ahead and adjust the sizing of this here. Over there we go. Okay, so they both mean square root of 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to work with radicals. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say we take a look at the square root of 75. If I tell you to simplify the square root of 75, this is what I'm looking for. I want you to go through what's under the radical and break it down until you find other perfect squares. So for example, 75 is like saying I have 75 cents. That's the same thing as 3 quarters. So that would be 3 times 25. Now I could stop here and rewrite it. So square root of 3 times 25. Let me go ahead and zoom in there a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and one of our properties of radicals is that we can now split this up if we want. I can rewrite this as a square root of 3 times the square root of 25. Now, 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is just 5. Remember, the square root is saying, give me a number, figure out what times itself gets you back to the number under the radical. So, for example, 2 squared is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. 3 squared is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. 5 squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. So again, this thing here, that is just 5. I have 5 times square root of 3, so 5 root 3. So square root of 75, let me go ahead and drop this down as well. It's your root 3. Your end answer here is 5 root 3. Go ahead and take a look at another one. Let's use square root of 18. So square root of 18, I'm going to go ahead and break it down. And again, you can stop as soon as you find a perfect square. So for example, looking at 18, I know that 9 times 2 goes into 18. So I can rewrite this. Square root of 9 times square root of 2. And I can separate them. Note that you don't have to do the separating. It's only if you find it easier for yourself to understand what's happening. Now again, the square root of 9, 9 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3. Times that root 2, so the answer is 3 root 2. So I've shown these two using the perfect square method. <clears throat> Let me show it using another method. I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same values. You can slide it off to the side here. So for the same one over here, so let me kind of say, let's say instead that I did it this way. So I'm able to have the square root of 3 times 5 times 5. Now I'm writing it that way because we know that 25 is 5 times 5. If you prefer this method, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to circle the pairs. Basically, whatever number shows up twice, circle that. 5 showed up twice. When that happens, it leaves the radical and it comes out as a representative. 5 root 3. Same as this one right here. Let's show that again for this one over here. I have square root of 3 times 3 times 2. And again, that's because I have a 9 here, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I'm going to go ahead and go through it, circle the pair. In this case, my pairs are 3s. They're going to leave the radical as a pair, and only one is going to be shown on the outside as a representative. 3 root 2. So this method is a longer method. This method here is a shorter method. Use whichever one you want to use in order to simplify your radicals.
So that's radical simplification. Now let's go ahead and uh, mention something else about radicals. I want you to see what happens when you multiply them. Just want to make sure we're on the same page here. In particular, let's see what happens when I do the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Okay? If I have a radical times itself, it's going to be the number that's on the inside, and the radical will be gone. Root 5 times root 5 is just the number 5, no more radical. And let's take a look as to why. So why is this happening? Well, I can show it to you two ways. One way is to say that, notice that these are the same thing. Let's say this was x and x. x times x is x squared. I could say this is the square root of 5 squared. And if it helps, go ahead and show that little 2 symbol right there. Remember up here, that is one way to write square root. You can make a little 2 there. Square root of 5 squared. Well, square root and square cancel out. So that's just the number 5. Another way to show this is that it is square root of 5 times 5, like this. And you could circle your pair. Again, I have two 5s underneath. They are now circled. They leave the radical. That's 5 times the square root of 1. But the square root of 1 is just 1. So that is still 5. And lastly, a final way to show is the square root of 25. And the square root of 25, well, 25 is a perfect square, and that is just 5. So basically what I'm proving here is that no matter how you break it down, this will equal the number that would have been on the inside. So let's show this for another one as well. Let's go over here. Let's say I did square root of 11 times the square root of 11. That's just 11. And it works with even numbers also. The square root of 18 times square root of 18 is just 18. This works for anything on the inside. If both radicals are the exact same type, so they're both square roots, and the exact same inside, then when you multiply them together, you're going to get out what you have on the inside. So that's how we're going to simplify radicals and multiply radicals. The last thing I want to talk about here is rationalizing. So let me uh, go ahead here and separate these. So we're going to talk about rationalizing radicals. Okay, let's say I have, actually let me label this now, talking about rationalizing. And in particular, we're rationalizing the denominator. So let's say I have 1 over the square root of 6. Now, when I rationalize, what this means is that I don't want to see a radical on the bottom. Now, granted, sometimes we will leave radicals in the bottom. For right now, I want you to know how to get rid of them. And it's a really easy process. If you have a square root, and again, right now you are only working with square roots. If you have a square root in the bottom, to rationalize, you're going to multiply top and bottom by that radical that's in the bottom. So multiply top and bottom by the radical 6, square root of 6. Once you do that, now multiply straight across. 1 times root 6 is square root of 6. If I look at the bottom, root 6 times root 6, that's like root 5, root 5, root 11, root 11, root 18, root 18. What you're left with is just 6. Root 6 over 6 is your final answer. That's an example of rationalizing. Let's take a look at another one. Let's go ahead and do 2 divided by the square root of 10. Do the exact same way. Multiply top and bottom by the radical in the bottom. It doesn't matter if there's other numbers down below or radicals up top. You are always going to multiply top and bottom by the radical sitting in the bottom. Root 10, root 10. Those are both radicals. Go straight across. 2 radical 10, or 2 square root of 10 up top. In the bottom, root 10 times root 10 is just 10. 
Now, I'm not done yet, and that's because I have a 2 here and a 10 there. They're both even numbers. We can go ahead and simplify them. Divide the top by 2, that becomes a 1. Divide the bottom by 2, that becomes a 5. So your final answer is root 10 over 5. That's an equal sign. So root 10 over 5. Let's go ahead and do one more here. Let's take a look at... Um, 3 root 7, 3 root 7 over radical 5. Now again, I don't care about other numbers, I don't care about other radicals. All I care about is what's happening in the bottom. So I've got a radical 5 down below, multiply top and bottom by just that radical 5. And go across. So we know we're going to have a 3 up here. Radical 7 times radical 5 is that square root of 35. Remember, I can actually multiply this stuff together on the inside. These two 5s are the same, so that bottom is just a 5. So we've got 3 square root of 35 over 5. The 3 and the 5 have nothing in common, so we are done. Okay? Let me go ahead and zoom out here. Alrighty, so on this page here, we have how to write square roots, examples of two different ways of solving square roots and simplifying. We have explanations for why multiplying the same thing twice gets you whatever's on the inside. And we have three examples of rationalizing. And we're done.